Hello and good afternoon. Um, my name is Edward Medor coming to you live today. This beautiful, super hot day in Austin, Texas. Uh, and, and again, I've got my friend Derek Hofrichter from Service Business Evolution. And we're super pumped to provide to you yet again another segment which really ties off this series um, that we've been having with SBE. Um, so far, we've been able to talk to you about, uh, you know, how to fill the board year round by selling service agreements, uh, eliminating zero dollar calls, getting your prices right. And now we're going to actually teach you how to create a service agreement that your customers are truly going to want to buy. And so pretty pumped up. Uh, Derek, how the heck are you today, man? Man, I'm doing so well. It's good to be back together. What what is the fifth? Is this the fifth one that we've uh, done together? Something like that, I think. I, I think I, I'm not sure right Fourth now. or fifth? It seems yeah. like you're part of, of the family, and and we love having you here. And you know, Derek, I always tell people I I feel like you're the most interesting man. On the, <laughs> you know, kind of like the Dos Equis, most interesting man, like. I mean, you've done it all. I love hearing you speak. You're you're very passionate, uh, you know, and exciting, and you're just a wealth of information, man. So, you know, we're super happy to have you here today. Um, and and by the way, you know, there were some questions already going on. I encourage you always, please feel free to leave questions in the chat. Uh, there's a chat bubble in the lower right hand corner of your screen. We will make sure to get to all of them. Uh, we are going to be sending out a copy of the recording at the end, so uh, don't don't be bashful. If you've got a question, somebody else is probably thinking it too. Yeah, yeah, and I, I appreciate that, Ed. So um, I'll try to you know take on the challenge of making talking about service agreements and maintenance agreements really interesting and really uh, you know fascinating and useful. But the truth is, it's one of the most important things that a home service business can do can think about and 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 can offer it really does it just with my background of being a coach here at sbe and a trainer here at sbe and getting to work with a lot of home service-based businesses the ones that you know come to us having already gotten started with selling service agreements and maintenance agreements are so further ahead uh, than the ones who uh have never kind of implemented this or, or figured this out so it's 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 a really important topic and some, some of our topics that we've done, I think have been a little bit more like philosophical in nature. Uh, and this one is very granular. Like this one is very uh, specific about uh, what is it that customers actually want in a maintenance agreement? What, what is it that would make a, a and I, I, I use words interchangeably, service agreements, maintenance agreements. Some companies call them BIP um, agreements. Some people call them and in the HVAC world, call them like, comfort clubs. Uh, there, there's a lot of words uh, that we can use. So uh, sometimes you'll hear me say both service agreements and maintenance agreements. To me, that it's the exact same thing. You know what I like to call it? I, I like to call it for home service business. It's, it's called reoccurring revenue. Yeah, like exactly. That. It's called uh, it's called being smart. That's, yeah. that's what it's, uh, that's, and, and it's smart for the homeowner too. So it, it's one of those true like win-win opportunities uh, for businesses. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of homeowners and a lot of home services businesses that don't believe in it. Yeah. So that that's like a that's like a little barrier of um, entry, I think, for for a lot of companies is one they don't believe in it, uh, so they don't know how to talk about it. They don't know they don't actually know why somebody would want it. Uh, and then if they're interacting with a homeowner who doesn't believe in it, doesn't know why they would want it. That, that's sort of a rep recipe for uh, nothing to happen. And then it's like a confirmation bias, too, for that business of, no, no one wants them. Well, yeah. that's, right. that's what you like to call a limiting belief, right? A limiting belief. And, yeah. and I remember recently, because I, I love, I go there for the comments sometimes, but like next door, right? So I'm on the yeah. next door yeah. app and I'm reading somebody, I kid you not, who's complaining about the fact that this HVAC company had just come out, charged them what they perceived to be way too much money for a repair that should have only taken, you know, or only did take like 15 minutes, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're like, 
And on top of that, I got sold like a $40 plan, you know, $40 monthly plan. And I'm just so outraged by this. Yeah. But yeah then, then five minutes later, you're reading someone who's talking about like, can you believe that it's going to take like a week to get somebody out to fix this right now? They don't get it that there's this huge shortage on the trades. And it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, you, you got to be happy sometimes that somebody's actually going to be able to come out to your house. And if they're going to offer you a service plan that might, you know, cut back on the extra after hours call fee that you might have to pay or give you priority you know, to, to actually have someone come out to your house. Customers do want this. Like, they, they do want it. It's just about you educating them why they're going to want it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind, of, kind of a sister company of ours that is an HVAC plumbing company in Phoenix, Arizona. By sister, it's the, the owners of uh, SVE own an HVAC plumbing business. And just to give you an idea, they're, they're a larger, you know, company, but they're pushing upwards of 60,000 maintenance agreement customers. Wow. That's people, people, people want these, <laughs> like, especially when it's done well. And uh, here, here's a little teaser for those who make it to the end. I'm going to give everyone the opportunity to download the same service agreement document that that company uses to sell 60,000 of these. So that's, that's, a, that's a giveaway that I've never been allowed to give away before. So, uh, yeah, but that, you got to make it to the end in order to get that opportunity uh, uh, to do that. So let's, let's dive in. Why? I think we got to start at the why, because if we don't understand the why, we're not going to know what to include in there. And I, I, you know, I was looking at the registration list for this, and I know that we've got junk removal companies. We've got garage door uh, companies. We've got uh, cleaning services. That, that's okay. <laughs> this applies to everything, but I always give the caveat that my expertise is primarily in HVAC and plumbing with a little electrical. Uh, so there might be some things, you know, where if you're one of these other type of home services, like a locksmith or it still applies, just ask the question in the chat. If, if I'm not translating it uh, well over to you, because I can help make the translation on some of these things. So why, let's start with the customer. Why would a customer agree to purchase a service agreement or a maintenance agreement? Like what, what is it that the customer wants? They want to, like this is a huge one. They want to eliminate surprises. We, we could also call this peace of mind. They, it's in, in my opinion, it's like, why would somebody go to a doctor for a annual screening or a, you know, an annual uh, physical, like that, that's someone who there's nothing wrong. Cause if there's something wrong, they would go to the emergency room or they would do something, you know, emergency oriented. Uh, there's nothing wrong, but why would somebody do that? Why would somebody go get a colonoscopy or have their blood work done or, you know, EKG test? It's because they're trying to eliminate surprises from their life. Be proactive instead of reactive. Absolutely. There's there's a, a whole saying about it. I forget who said it. It might have been like Benjamin Franklin or something, right? That, I thought it was, ounce, <laughs> it was me, right? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And I, I think we all know this, that it's usually cheaper to proactively take care of issues than to uh, reactively have to take care of issues. Uh, when you're dealing with mechanical components, uh, earlier in my career, I, I was involved with um, airplane accident investigations. That was one of my first jobs. And there was something, you know, of course. Yeah, of course, right? That there was something just fascinating to me from a mechanical perspective called an uncontained failure. When, when something when, like a part on a helicopter or a part on an airplane breaks, but it breaks in a way that it takes out other parts and pieces as it breaks, right? And so anytime we're dealing with anything mechanical, that's always, uh, that's going to be way more expensive, way more labor intensive to deal with than if we had just fixed the little belt or the little screw or the little part uh, proactively. Homeowners want to extend the life of their systems, whatever it is their garage door, their HVAC equipment, their water heater, uh, their electrical outlets, their wiring, their uh, their lights, 
uh, the circuit board, whatever it is, people want those things to last longer than not, right? Uh, they, they want to kind of be able to plan out their future because maybe, maybe on one of these maintenances, they get a list of things, uh, some of them more important, some of them not, but they can kind of think out to the future and start budgeting for things and understanding, okay, I have a list of eight things that I know in the future I'm going to need to take care of. Maybe I can take care of two of them this time, two or three of them next time, and they can plan uh, for this. This one is like one that is fresh on my mind because I just sold a house. Uh, my wife and I just moved and we sold a house in Phoenix. And the fact that we had an HVAC maintenance agreement came up and was impactful actually in the sale of the house. It, it, was, it was something that added value to the home that uh, as part of like the disclosures and everything, I could, I turned over to the new buyer, the maintenance records of the system. And I, and I even said, hey, and I actually still, I just renewed this recently. I have a plan that can transfer over to you. And they thought it was amazing. The, the value of uh, my home was directly impacted by having a maintenance agreement. The customer wants to have warranties. They, they want to be able to protect the things that they've spent money on in their house and protect those investments. And this is really key. A lot of the service agreements, maintenance agreements that I see leave this part out or forget this part and they make it too clinical. People want the VIP treatment. Why, Edward, why does somebody chase like status with an airline? Why would you want to get like executive platinum on American Airlines? Oh, I, I can answer that question definitively. Yeah, is I am that guy. I am that guy with hotels and airlines. <laughs> but I don't I mean, for me, it's like, yeah, knowing that I'm always going to, not always, but 99% of the time, I'm going to get upgraded, move to the front of the line, like get to sit in the front of the plane. Cause I, you know, I hate flying and I want to get on and off as quickly as possible. And like, I put a lot of time and energy, which we could make the analogy, like I've spent a lot of money on this system and like, you know, my home is my castle. And so, I mean, I get it, you know, we want that VIP treatment and, you know, it's just, yeah, it makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense. I, I definitely chase status as well. I have, I travel a lot for work. I, um, I do these type of trainings in person during the fall and spring weekly every other week i travel a lot i know you travel a lot yeah it's worth it to me to to maybe spend a little bit more sometimes to stick with the same brand to have loyalty to a brand to get the vip treatment to be to be acknowledged right for my uh my loyalty and support uh so i want special treatment uh that's why we're chasing the things right and so if we're not thinking about this then the the homework then can think well if it's all the same, maybe I'll just buy one-off visits as things come up. If, if I'm not actually getting status or VIP treatment by entering into this agreement with, with the company. So this one is really, really important. And I actually have a, another kind of slide around this uh, because it's so important because I'm going to give some ideas of things that we could do. Uh, but let's, let's shift to then why, why the, okay, we know what the customers want. Why do businesses or why should they want to be really good at this? Recurring revenue. That's a good thing, right? Predictable revenue. How about that? If, if we have uh, certain numbers of these customers, we can start to predict our revenue. Uh, consistent work. If we're in a, in a business that has fluctuations and demand, you know, HVAC being the most obvious, it's hot right now, so it's busy. But what happens when it's October, November, December, and it's not hot? If if we're selling these right now, we have work to go do when it when it's not hot. Plumbing, there's times of the years. I work with a lot of plumbing business. They have they have peaks and valleys in demand uh, as well. There's different seasons for everything, and so this starts to give us some consistent, predictable work. I already talked about it. We as a business, we should want customers who want to be loyal. Uh, with us. They have a lot of options on who they could call 
for any of these home services. They have no shortage of option. And we want those customers who are like, no, I will not call anyone else. I, I have my company that I'm going to, that I'm going to call a lot of this. This is kind of a, a interesting one as well. It, it's kind of the other side of increases the value of the home. It also increases the value of the business. I, I end up working as a coach with an, a, quite a few HVAC companies who the reason why they, they come to us for coaching and training is they were at a point where they, for whatever reason, decided to look into selling their business. And then they, they had the shocking news that the business was not worth as much as they thought it was. And the reason is they, they don't have that predictable recurring revenue. All, all of their business is on demand business. And for someone buying that business, there's no guarantee that any of that is going to be future work. But if you have a large database of maintenance contracts, that is predictable, recurring, safe, not as risky a revenue to a potential buyer. And so your business is going to be seen as more valuable and there's going to be a higher dollar amount attached uh, to your business directly related to the number of maintenance agreement, service agreement customers you have. Uh, this is one again, being proactive and not finding this out the hard way of when you're completely ready uh, to sell that the business is not actually worth that much. And you need to go now and spend a few years accumulating maintenance agreement contracts and service agreement contracts in order to get it to the level uh, where you feel like you can sell it. So there, there's a concept as well that I really like philosophically we like, and it's called taking quiet market share. It's growing your business in a way that doesn't have to be loud. And by loud, I mean, uh, cause this is a path. We could grow our business loud. We could be on the TV. We could be on the radio. We could be on the billboards. We could be really loud. That's, that's a viable path for many businesses, but that costs a lot of money in order to have the type of marketing budget. Instead, we could grow our business quietly. Every time we get a demand call, we convert them into a maintenance agreement customer, and then they don't ever call anyone else. So as time goes on, the other companies are like, hey, does it feel like the phone doesn't ring as much as it used to? Like, what is going on? And it's because there's companies doing this smartly who are quietly taking more and more and more of that market share under the radar without needing to spend the advertising costs and the marketing costs. They're just doing such a good job with this that anytime they interact with the customer, the customer doesn't interact with another company again. And that, that market share grows in this manner. It's a really strong philosophy for growing a home service business. Especially if you're a smaller business and you just do not have that marketing budget. You don't need a marketing budget if you're really good at this. Right? That all making sense, Edward? No, I'm tracking with you because, I mean, I have this pain point all the time with, with every kind of contractor. Like, except I do have a good HVAC guy now. Good. Really. I got a great HVAC guy. But I mean, so often I'm calling a new company into my home all the time. And I wouldn't need to if they were reeling me in like this. Yes. yes. And, and I check off a lot of those boxes that you were talking about, Derek, like, you know, trying to increase the value of the home and, you know, the VIP treatment is one that resonates for me. I'm wondering if you tie into the VIP treatment, though. Like, you know, I'm always looking for a deal as well, too. Absolutely. That's, that's part of the VIP treatment. Yeah. Some, sometimes, like, I have been known to buy a maintenance agreement throughout the years because it's like somebody's offering me a discount today. Like, oh, well, you'll save, you know, 10 or 15% off of this job. And I'm like, really? Take my money, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Or even, you know, with airlines, with hotels, there's little, little freebies they throw in there, you know, by being, uh, achieving certain, certain status. Yeah. And, and discounts. And yeah, we view that as like, this is the special treatment uh, yeah. that I get, uh, on that why for customer before I move on the one about the warranties and protecting the investment. Like this is just an area where I see a lot of companies just completely drop the ball and that, uh, they're not letting the homeowner know that a lot of those warranties that go along with the new equipment or the new part 
sometimes or oftentimes actually have a, a fine print requirement that you do maintenance on it. Mm. And, and so like that is, that, that's just like kind of a low hanging fruit that a lot of companies just overlook and they're, they're potentially setting up a customer for a, a very bad experience. If this comes into play of maybe they had a five year warranty on that new system and year four and a half, uh, something goes wrong and they're like, well, then no problem. I have a five year warranty. And then they call the manufacturer and they're like, okay, just send over your maintenance records uh, for that. All right. Or, or have your HVAC company or your plumbing company, just send over the records. Oops. Uh, no one, no one told me that I had actually had to have this thing maintained, uh, in order to, in order to have the warranty protections and, and, and things like that. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just, uh, a huge opportunity, uh, there. Okay. So if we're building, we're going to build a service agreement plan. We're going to build it. There's some components that we need to put in there. So this is, this is like so important. That's why I put it number one. We need to have an ability and the forms or what, you know, whatever it is to specifically capture the equipment info that we need. We need to know, you know, if it's HVAC, we need to have the serial numbers. We need to have the equipment manufacturer brand. We need to have the year, how old it is, all of those things, because we need, uh, we need one for our internal marketing efforts, because then we can start to sort if we're going to now it gets slow and we're going to start calling these appointments. We should be able to sort and let's call the oldest systems first, right? Or let's, let's call a specific, it's a time of year. Let's call a specific type of system first. Uh, I just see so many companies that aren't tracking that info because nowhere in their process do they collect it. And right here in the fact, Derek, yeah, one, yeah, you can do that with workies. Hey, there you go. go. There's equipment tracking in there. <laughs> yes, yes. It's so important, but Edward, this is like, a thing that I see all the time when I start working with a company is they did not track that. They did not collect it. And now they're just severely limited in a lot of ways because they don't have that info. They've got to start from scratch. So uh, this is really important, uh, especially if, if like an HVAC, we could sell multiple maintenance agreements if they have multiple systems. Yeah. So we, or maybe, maybe they have a two system home and they just want the maintenance agreement on one of the systems, we need to make sure that they're not pulling any fast ones on us that we know which system it is that, and that has the maintenance agreement and which system it is that does not have the maintenance agreement, right? Uh, or they, they bought the system from somebody else and then they're trying to slide it under the, <laughs> there's just so many things where we need to specifically capture the equipment. We obviously, we need to know the terms and we know we need to know our prices terms there, there's a great debate happening especially in the hvac world about should we sell these annually or should we sell these monthly should should we set them up for auto payment monthly or should we have them prepay for a year at a time two years at a time three years at a time pros and cons both ways i i could point out a number of successful very successful companies that do it either way I'm still at this point, I'm still biased towards annually. That's, that's my bias because of a few other things that makes it easier to spiff or commission the people that sell them. It holds the company more accountable to run good visits because there is going to be a renewal opportunity there in annual. Um, but I am opening up my mind more and more to the uh, monthly. Uh, but that is, it's a strategy. Either way, a company needs to make the right strategy. There's pros to the month because it's going to be a lower ask, you know, 10 bucks a month, 12 bucks a month versus maybe 200 bucks, 250 bucks all at once. There's, there's different strategies here. The price, uh, kind of what I'm seeing right now, we work with companies all over North America and in Canada. I'm kind of seeing that sweet spot of like a two visit service agreement, somewhere between two to 300. Uh, U.S. dollars, whatever that is, Canadian uh, equivalent. That's that's kind of what I most commonly see. If you're at 200, you're definitely at the low end. If you're at uh, 300, you're up at the upper end. And then most of the companies are in that like 225 to 260, 270 
Wait, how, how much did you say in Canadian? Because I actually had a, a Canadian contractor ask me about this. I don't know what the conversion is. I didn't. I said, no, uh, yeah. but, but how much? I, I, I know the math on that. Okay. okay. 200 to 300 US. 200 to 300 US. Okay. So yeah, 200 US in Canadians, like two, well, at least today, it's like 275, I think roughly around that. Yeah. And uh, Dan is asking a question that amount that I'm saying 200 bucks to 300 bucks is an annual amount. So if we wanted to do monthly, we would just divide that by 12. Uh, if and maybe you give them a discount, you know, if they're doing the annual year, multi system, a nice so. discount, yeah. but if they're paying monthly, like don't, don't discount it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that so, company in Phoenix, Phoenix that I mentioned that. Um, is pushing 60,000 maintenance agreement customers. Their, their charge, their price right now, I believe is 258, which is just like right in the middle of that sweet spot uh, that, I, yeah. that I mentioned. Okay, so uh, we gotta sort that out. Uh, maybe we offer a service where two visits a year don't make sense. HVAC makes sense. We got fall and we got spring. Uh, it's, it's, and if we even think about like uh, the amount of miles if we did it a mile equivalency to an HVA system that you put on your HVA system, like it's sort of like getting an oil change three to four times a, a year. You're running that system a lot. It needs maintained more often. Uh, other systems, you know, maybe like garage doors or gutters or even plumbing. A lot of times for plumbing, I see once a year being a good, a good rhythm uh, for something like that. So we, we need to have the right strategy for the right type of uh, business. And that and that's wild to me because initially when you were talking about sixty thousand, I was thinking on the much lower end, like, oh, what if they're paying, you know, thirty dollars, you know, a month or or something like that, you know? But uh, you're, you're telling me two fifty eight annually. I mean, that's over fifteen million dollars a year in so, recurring revenue. I mean, yeah, and obviously not. Not every single one renewing right. every year, but they're also selling new ones all the time, you know, as well. Off, you've got new yeah. ones, you know, you're yeah. keeping the churn on that. Yeah. yeah. So, no, there's a massive opportunity there that a re recurring predictable right. cash flow. That, that's one of the pros to the monthly is that you've got recurring predictable monthly cash flow coming in. If you have 5,000 maintenance agreement customers and you're billing them all, 25 bucks a month and that hits every month that's that's nice uh cash flow coming in uh to the business wow. okay this this is another component we need to know what the purpose is i was like with hvac what the the purpose it's preventative maintenance right it's com com being comfortable year round if it's plumbing it's health and safety if it's electrical it's a safety inspection. We we need to know we need to know the purpose uh, behind it. So, so that that component needs to be in the document. A, a lot of the plumbing maintenance agreements that I see actually just say health and safety inspection agreement or health and safety inspection report. Right. I'll, I'll lean into the lean into the purpose. With the terms, the price, the purpose, we could also do dual ones. So if we're a company that does plumbing and HVAC, we could offer a dual purpose maintenance agreement where it's, let's say two HVAC visits and one plumbing visit uh, per year. And, and we built that purpose into it. I, I know companies that have a trifecta. It, it's, a, it's a maintenance agreement and it's two HVAC visits, one plumbing visit and one electrical visit per year. That's just four visits that this company booked uh, for themselves uh, in the future. We need to know the scope of work. What are we actually going to do on this? Because we should include that in the document. So if it's an, again, an HVAC one, we're gonna say something like, this includes a 56 point tune up. It, all right, if it's, if it's a plumbing maintenance, it should say the scope of work is we're gonna do a whole house home health and safety inspection. Right. So we would and, and, and actually be able to show what that involves. Right. So scope of work is important. VIP treatment. It needs to include all the benefits and privileges of being a, a customer and having one of these things. 
And it does need to be a contract. It does need to have a section where we're signing this and it is a contract. Oh, and, Gary, I yeah. just thought of something, especially if it's got a contract on it. Have you ever had anyone incorporate like maybe into your platinum comfort club, uh, like a, a labor protection plan? Like, mm -hmm. like your yeah, work? I'm going to mention that as one of the benefits and privileges. You're right. You're tracking. Absolutely. I'm yeah. just thinking how I yeah. could maximize all my upsells, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. yeah. So this does need to be a contract. And um, due to it being a contract, we need to include contract language in there. So that that's a component that needs to be in there of this is a binding contract. Uh, you know, uh, here's how the parties could get out of the contract. So we need to understand, like, what is the cancellation policy? What if the homeowner moves? Uh, what if we don't want to go back to that house again? How do we as the company get out of this? So we, we need that contract language in there as well, because it does need to be a contract. Okay. okay. So I'm kind of wrapping up here, but this is kind of where I want to spend a good amount of time because I think this is where the most confusion exists. What are some ideas of benefits or privileges that give that VIP treatment to where the customer is like, no, yeah, I want that. Um, I, I, I want that status. Okay, so here's an idea. Hey, anyone who's a part of our VIP club maintenance agreement, uh, we will waive all after hours fees. Normally it's $149 uh, to get us out to your house on weekends, holidays, evenings, whatever it is you work. But for anyone who gets this privilege, we will waive that. That right there could almost sell it because especially if it's an older system, if they've experienced this before, if they live somewhere where it's hot or, you know, a number of other factors that might, that's close to paying for the service agreement in the first place. If normally I would have to pay $150 to get you out um, when I need you and you're just going to waive that. And I gave you 200 bucks for this, man, I've, I just got 150 bucks back off of this thing, right? So we, we, we need to build these financial calculations so that the homeowner can say, this logically makes sense to me. I could actually save money by paying this money for a, a foreign agreement. So that's one example. A uh, 24 hour response time, fine print, 24 hour business hours. So uh, 24 business hours uh, response time, but knowing that, hey, we'll make a guarantee to you that if you're one of these agreement customers, we will get out to you within 24 business hours. I don't know, Edward, if you've ever needed a, if you've ever had an emergency at your house where, where you've needed somebody. Uh, I've, especially I owned a business in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and a number of times I really needed a plumber. <laughs> there was something uh, uh, going on and I probably had to call 10 to 15 different plumbers to find someone who could come out today to help me deal with my emergency that was help, uh, you know, happening today. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, it'd be nice to know that I had that peace of mind because it seems like pretty regularly in Texas, we've been having deep freezes. Uh, oh yeah. Time. And uh, <laughs> I heard again on next door that people were waiting like two weeks to have a plumber come out for the last fiasco we had. Yeah. Uh, I've, and I've even seen this, this 24 hour response time backed up with a guarantee, like backed up with um, like, if it's an HVAC company backed up with like a comfort guarantee of if, if we're not able to come out within 24 out 24 business hours, we will put you up in a hotel for the night. Wow. Like really wow. like lean into it. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That probably terrifies a lot of companies, but, you know, hey, uh, if we're talking about it, like differentiating yourselves and being a company that someone wants to be loyal to and work with, you got to think outside the box. All right. Priority service. Similar to 24 hour response time, but basically uh, we will bump you to the front of the line. We, we can we can prompt things like this, too. Like when we answer the phone, if the person answering the phone says, you know, hello, thanks for calling ABC, you know, whatever. Are you a maintenance agreement customer? 
So we could even start to prompt this idea for those who are one, they can proudly say, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. I'm ready for the special treatment. And uh, for those who aren't one, they're like, oh no, I'm not, right? And it starts to prompt that in their minds uh, a little bit. So priority service. Uh, another benefit privilege. This is this is a very common objection that keeps a lot of people from selling maintenance agreements. And it's the objection of, oh, you know, it makes sense. I would do it, but I'm going to move. So I'm not going to buy one. Yeah. But no problem. It's fully transferable. You can either, if you're moving within our service area, you can take it with you to your new house. Or if you're moving outside the service area, add some value to your to your house. Uh, it helps with the home inspection report and things like I just I went through and that this is this can be a benefit that you transfer uh, to the new homeowner. So you won't you won't be wasting that money in, in case you move. Uh, yeah, you, you prompted this one, uh, Ed, right? Uh, a discount on repairs. What I usually suggest when I'm building price books is somewhere around like a eight to 12 percent discount somewhere somewhere in that zone kind of depends on what type of work you're doing but again if if someone has like a one thousand dollar repair and they're getting ten percent off of that repair again they could be they could be basically getting that maintenance agreement now for half off right because now that that discount is paying for half of that we can start to do math like that there, there could be scenarios too where it's a it's a more extensive repair and so it actually pays for the maintenance agreement. So why would you not, why would you not sign up for it? If, if you're selling maintenance agreements for 200 bucks a year, you're given a 10% discount. Someone has a $2,000 repair. The, there's no reason not to sign up for it. The maintenance agreement is free in that, yeah. in that scenario. Right. So, and then, and then once, so they can, it's a great entry point to the purchase, but then as long as they are a maintenance agreement customer, they continue to receive uh, discounts as a benefit of being that. Uh, they're going to get a written maintenance report. So they're going to get a full, you know, a written report about everything that's going on uh, with their system. And that's something that they can have. Again, that came in handy for me selling a house that I could give all the uh, reports uh, to the seller. It was really cool actually to be able to do that. Uh, one of the benefits that we want to talk about is how, how we're going to extend the life of whatever it is that we're servicing. So that's, that's a really important privilege, uh, and benefit. This is another one that a lot of companies don't think about, but what if we had a special email list that was only for our service agreement members, where maybe there would be a monthly or a quarterly promotion that only they would get access to or uh, maybe if it's hvac during the summer or maybe in june and we just that list only we say uh no, for only for our maintenance agreement customers no trip charge this month so if, yeah. if you have any issue or any concern take advantage of it this month and that and that speaks to that whole VIP thing, man. Like, yeah, I, I want something like that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a I know a company again that sells a ton of systems. They sell their HVAC. They tell they sell a ton of equipment, and they'll use this to um, kind of flatten out some of the valleys. You know, like specifically, like this last year, February is historically when they sell the least amount of equipment. So February rolls around and they hit their VIP list with this month only free duct cleaning with any system purchase only available to maintenance agreement customers. Right. So maybe if you were ever, you know, you, your house is a little older, you were maybe thinking, you know, is it going to make it through another summer or not? That might be like, wow, that's, that kills two birds with one stone. Cause I already knew my, my duct work needed cleaning. I've already been having issues. Yeah. I'll take advantage of that. That's special treatment. I'm going to, because I was a VIP, I'm going to take advantage of this special offer that no one else is going to get with any other company. Yeah. You know, that, that reminds me because I've always been a big proponent for if you want your phone to ring more, take care of the customers that you already have. Yes. And I feel like a lot of contractors miss the boat on that because yeah. it's, you know, there, there's a fine line where you don't want to be annoying and sending text messages or emails all the time, but Sometimes all you got to do is ask, like, tell me about a promotion. Tell me that I could, you know, uh, 
if you're an electrician, like I could upgrade to smart switches throughout my house. That's yeah, like yeah. a need I already have that you didn't know about. Even like with gutter cleaning, you know, you were out here last year and I haven't picked up the phone to call you, but if you just touch me, send me an email, send me a text, yeah, yeah. let me know, right? Yeah, it's, if, we're, if we're a plumbing business, you know, we could hit up our uh, our list and say, you know, uh, this month only, uh, water filters, uh, big discount by, because you're one of our loyal uh, customers, you know, a loyal customer exclusive. Yeah, there's just so so much creativity that can go into this of taking care of the customers you already have. They're, that let them know. And then too, they, they want to renew this because they don't want to lose access to that 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 list of of things that they're getting and those offers and, and, and things like that. Okay, so this is one that you asked about earlier on a previous slide. Yes, I, I'm a huge proponent of this of let's say while I'm a maintenance agreement customer, I, I have a fan motor replaced. The manufacturer might only warranty that part for let's say 90 days or maybe six months or maybe a year. But if you're a maintenance agreement customer, we're gonna warranty the labor, the part, all the work for the duration of the maintenance agreement. So if you wanna buy a one year, we'll warranty it for one year. If you wanna buy a two year for two years, for a three year for three years. So if anything happens to that, Part where the manufacturer is only covering it for let's say six months or twelve months, no no charge. We'll we'll come out. We'll cover the part. We'll cover the labor. Uh, we'll we'll completely take care of that that repair that we did as a as a benefit of being uh, one of our maintenance agreement customers. So he, again, any one of these on here could theoretically pay for the maintenance agreement itself. They're all like really good ways to spend some money to end up saving a lot of money. Uh, depending on you know what happens with your system and things like that so last one in there i just with the question mark that's where like you know, again, creativity i mentioned somebody said all right some some companies do you like the comfort stay guarantee if we can't get out to you within a certain amount of time we're guaranteeing your comfort we'll put you up in a hotel if if we can't get out there in a certain amount of time well we guarantee we'll give you some uh temporary uh alleviation of, of the problem. We'll have somebody come by and drop off fans, you know, or uh, mobile units you know, or, or things like that. We'll, we'll, we'll do something, right? We can do some sort of guarantees in there, but I would, I would only recommend this when you as a company really have your act together and really have your systems down and really have your software and your track <laughs> down. Cause you, you don't want to create a mess for yourself by making promises that you can't keep. Yeah. Um, you know, it could be that if let's say a plumbing one, let's say part of the scope of work is every time we come out annually for that plumbing service visit, we're going to clear your condensate line, or we're going to clear a drain line or something like that. We could have a guarantee if, as long as you're doing that, if any type of flooding from that part happens, we will, we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll warranty it and we'll, we'll come out there and we'll make it right. You know, cause we were out there and, and clearing these lines. Uh, I see a question in, in here from Brian. No, Brian, I think that's fine. I, I think if, but the, so Brian is asking, uh, we waive service fees. I, I think that's great. I think that's a great benefit, but there's, there's a, a catch to it. Of I'd be curious though, what actually happens on these calls that you go to when you're waiving the fee. Or are you guys doing a really good job with that visit? Uh, I would be curious, like what the average ticket is, because uh, that that would be the missing context uh, to fully answer that question. Because if if you're losing money, because it it obviously costs you money to send that tech and the fuel and the vehicle and their time. So I would just want to look at that component to make sure that you're still you're waiving the fee, but you're still coming out ahead and it's still a profitable. A visit for you and uh that would be and we're kind of similar to uh specifically the webinar that we did a few months zero ago. dollar calls right zero dollar calls right yeah. so every time we go to the house we have a good strategy and plan to uh, not lose money on on that call so as promised if anyone would like to download a sample Ooh. agreement uh yeah they can uh they can go for it 
And we're, uh, we're, we're going to email this out to you too, along with the recording. So you've, you've got a, got a chance to get it. And I know there were some folks that we had a lot of people that registered that, you know, I don't, I don't blame them. I get it. It's hot outside. You got, you got business, business calls. So like, fear not. I always tell people sign up because we're going to send you a recording anyway, and we'll, we'll make sure that you can download this. Um, were there any other questions though? Any, any anybody feeling bashful? Ed, do you feel do you feel now like you could write up, you could create a service agreement that would sell? Did, did we accomplish? Oh, yeah. I mean, as, as you were going on, I'm sitting there thinking of all the ways that <laughs> we could incorporate additional ideas in into a service plan. Like it's to me, this is definitely a, a no brainer, you know. And, and I know that a lot of companies are, you know, beginning to to at least try to sell a service maintenance agreement. But for all the reasons that you battled off today, Derek, I mean, it's just, it, it is imperative, you know, because you gotta be doing it. You whether your end game is, is selling later, you know, your company might not be worth anything if you don't actually have these service agreements in place. Um, yeah. And that's something um, an investor is gonna look at. And, and, and there's, there's the other component too. Maybe, maybe a company is like, well, we have agreements in place, but our guys never sell them. Right. But that's, uh, we've kind of alluded to it a few times on webinars where I always think it comes down to three things. Again, the issue of they don't believe in them, the limiting beliefs. They don't think the customers are going to want them. So they don't bring it up. They, they don't know how to do it. They, they just don't know how to talk about it. They've never actually had a meeting there in the office where they sat and they went through the maintenance agreement. So, you know, the, I've, this is just, I train a lot of technicians and, um, I know about technicians that if they're not fully comfortable with a the topic, they'll just not bring it up. Like if they're not fully confident with offering payment plans, they'll just not bring it up. If they're not fully confident with, the maintenance agreement, like they're worried they're going to get a question and not know the answer to it. Yeah. So we, we, need, we need training on the document. And then the third reason why we might not be selling it is uh, we haven't created a incentive system for the technicians to sell them. Th those are usually like, the, it's one of those three for a lot of companies. It's all three. Yeah. Of, um, and, and sometimes too, uh, you just reminded me, sometimes it's even the mechanism to build for oh yeah, it's for the, the software agreement, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, again, I'm going to give that shameless pitch here, but you can do that with Workies. We've we've got the automations around it that will even tell your customer, hey, it looks like you haven't scheduled your service visit yet, and you can go online and here and do that, you know. And by the way, we're going to take care since you wanted to do reoccurring on this. We're we're just going to bill you for it very conveniently, you know. Yes. Yes. I have. I have I've, I've seen the, I've seen this scenario play out so many times where when the company finally gets the right software and finally actually uses it correctly, the sales of these just go up. Yeah. It, it was, it was the tools that were the, holding them back. They weren't making it easy for the customer to buy them. They weren't making it easy for the technicians to sell them. And it's, it has to be easy to buy. It has to be easy to sell. Uh, it has to just be easy. And, and so when you, uh, when you actually use your software and get it set up and actually roll it out and train your people how to use it, sales of these will go up a hundred percent. If I was keeping track of all these, like on an Excel spreadsheet, and then I had to, you know, maybe, maybe I had to do it myself or, you know, Donna in my office or Steve. And I'm like, I need you to call all these people and see if you can get them to renew. Are you kidding? Yeah. No, I won't I, sell I, service agreement. I have a really funny story about this. And that I, I was working with a company and they were just not selling many of these at all. And so I was trying to dig into it. And one, they were, they were, they were commissioning the technicians $5 if they sold these five bucks, which is not super motivating. And there was actually one of the texts that as we were looking into this, we found out that anytime he did sell one, he paid the person in the office $5 to do all the paperwork for him. 
Like he just, he didn't want to mess with it. He didn't want to uh, touch it. He just, because it was a, yeah, it was a handwritten, like complicated thing. It took up his time and all that. The spiff was so low uh, for him that it was better. It was more worth his time to take the spiff that he got and just pay somebody else uh, to, to do it for him. And, and so that, that again was an example when we actually got them to start using software uh, for this increase the spiff he had no issue selling them he just didn't want to do it before it just yeah. wasn't worth it and if, it. and if you're listening to derek's advice you know from from previous sessions we've had about eliminating zero dollar calls you can afford to pay a better spiff because yes. the first time you roll that truck out there on a service call you know for as a part of the maintenance plan you're making money you're making more money I, I know some HVAC technicians that make an extra fifteen to twenty thousand a year off of their commissions on selling maintenance agreements. Yeah, that's that's a house. You know that 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 starts to help you get a house down payment. That starts to get you into a, a better vehicle. That's that sends a kid to school, like that. That's a and that's just from selling maintenance agreements. Uh, that it's it's possible. Right. It's and it's so important to the business. It's a win win for the business to be spiffing that type of money for the volume of new customers. Awesome. Well, Derek, oh, yeah. I, I sincerely appreciate you again for for coming on and, and sharing this huge wealth of knowledge with all of us. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, service business evolution. We'll be back th this summer and uh, look forward to to bringing you more powerful information that can help uh, elevate your business. But for now, thank you very much. We'll send out a copy of that, that service agreement and uh, you guys stay cool out there. Okay. Thanks a lot.